Hello everyone, this is Captain Wyman and I want to welcome you to room 207. I wanted to make this little video to help prepare you for using Google Classroom in completing one of the first assignments for the year. In a minute, you'll see a video of me reading to you a story that you've already seen on the board. Uh, perhaps I already read it to you. You may have read it to yourself. The main idea is for you to really think about why you think Sean should either go forward to his friend Zeke's house or return home in order to get a drink. That's what I want you to write about in your response in the Google Classroom. Sean was on his way to his friend Zeke's house when he realized he hadn't had anything to drink all day. His throat was parched. Why do you think the word parched is yellow? And some of the other words in this text are yellow as well. Those are words that I chose to uh, draw attention to because I thought maybe you wouldn't know what they meant. Um, they can also be called vocabulary words. You could look them up. I encourage that. Um, or you could ask what they mean. Another thing you could do is look at the information in the text surrounding these vocabulary words and see if there are any clues as to what they could mean. Let's check that out. So what's going on with Z with Sean here? He's walking to his friend's house and he just figured out or thought or remembered he hadn't drank anything all day. So how do you think he might feel? his throat, this part of his body, how might that feel if he hasn't had anything to drink all day? It would feel parched, and parched means what? Dry, thirsty, wanting uh, liquid, right? I won't always, but in this case, I gave you the answer. I just told you that parched means dry or thirsty. And you should write that down. You should write the word parched in your spiral notebook and write down the definition right next to it. Uh, your spiral notebook is a place for you to collect information and take notes about what you learned throughout this year. There were 10 blocks separating the friends' houses. So that is 10 blocks would be separating. So between Sean's house and Zeke's house. There are 10 blocks. Do we know what 10 blocks are? Not really. It could be 10 city blocks, but basically it's a unit of measure, okay? And there's 10 of them. Sean had a habit of counting the blocks as he passed each intersection. What's an intersection? We've come to another vocabulary word, the word intersection. And an intersection is where one or two streets cross each other. Here's a picture of one. And while I'm showing you pictures, here is one illustrating city blocks. You can see from intersection to intersection would be considered one block. On this day, however, he felt like his thirst was too great. He had just passed the ninth intersection so we, we already figured out that each intersection was the end of a block and a beginning of a block. And if he just passed the ninth intersection, that means he has already traveled how many blocks? He, when he decided, he simply must have a drink. Sean was left with a decision to make. Should he just turn around and go home? Or would it be better to continue to Zeke's house. So he's so thirsty, he has to have a drink right this very second. We're gonna be uh, dealing with lots of word problems in math this year. And we use a strategy that has four different steps to it for solving our word problems. 
the first step, the first thing that we do is we figure out what's the problem all about. Well, here we're talking about Sean going to Zeke's house. That's what this story is really all about. The second thing we do when trying to solve a word problem is we try to identify what is the word problem asking of us? What are we um, supposed to figure out? This is a bit of a different kind of word problem because it's really asking us our opinion. Do you think Sean should go forward or backward? And the thing you're gonna use to um, support your opinion is the third part of figuring out word problems, which is identify and use the important information. In this case, what's the important information? What do we know about Sean? Well, we know he's thirsty. <laughs> And we also know that he has walked nine blocks, right? When he has decided he can't take it anymore. Um, what else do we know? Well, we know how many blocks are between his house and Zeke's house, right? There are a couple different math operations that you can do or use in order to uh, work with this information. You could do some subtracting, you could count on, um, but basically, I want you to use the numbers and I want you to make sense of the numbers and I want you to talk about the numbers in your answer to the Google Classroom question. What should Sean do and why? Should Sean go home or continue walking to Zeke's house? And in order to type your answer, you could actually click on the microphone and speak your answer to text. The only thing is when you do that, make sure you go back and read what the text says so that you can edit and you'll want to make sure that there is punctuation and the spelling is as accurate as you know it to be and put in some capital letters too if you're classy. Then you will turn in your answer, but don't worry, you can always click edit and make changes to it. And you might wanna do that after you do what's next, which is go into all of the answers and read what your peers, your classmates have written. Um, that might encourage you to make some changes to your own. Now don't copy, but uh, it's perfectly fine to be inspired by your friend's answers. And now we've come to the end of our Google Classroom experience. What you could do next is go ahead and comment and leave something encouraging for your classmates. Um, after reading their answer, tell them how well they did. Be uh, specific. One thing that we're not allowed to do in this classroom is criticize. So you're not to tell somebody that they spelled something incorrectly or that their answer was wrong or that they could even have done a better job. That's not your job. That's my job. And I will, um, in a positive way, help people realize how they could do things a little bit better. That's the teacher job, okay? But definitely leave some positive comments for your friends and even people you don't know yet because it's the beginning of the year. This is a great way to make first impressions and just to make people feel really good about themselves and their work. Uh, good luck with everything. I hope you enjoy this experience and that we have a great year together.